Before we continue, we need to understand the very basics of Green's functions. And you might have heard of George Green in your Calculus 3 or early calculus classes. Obviously, you can skip this part if you know about Green's functions. If you go to the United Kingdom today, you can visit George Green's mill where he lived and worked. He was basically born and worked here, and as a teenager, he developed the idea and theories of Green's functions through self-publications. He went on to finish his undergraduate degree in his 40s, where he passed away. Nobody really knows exactly how George Green formulated Green's functions and other mathematical theories, though he might have had access to an early library collection in his town. He had no formal education. And he worked in this mill, uh, this is actually a recreation in its location, throughout his life. So a Green's function is basically an idea of maybe like an impulse that you could like snap your fingers or create a little perturbation in some kind of linear system of a inhomogeneous differential or partial differential equation in a particular domain, like in space or time or both with particular initial and boundary conditions. So this is just a general theory to find analytical, analytical solutions of linear partial differential equations when it comes down to it. So if you can find the Green's function of a particular partial differential equations with some given boundary condition, initial condition, then you can write down the analytical solution directly as an integration. So the Green's function we'll generally call g or little g, and that is a particular solution defined as a linear operator. That's like the operator of the differential equation times the Green's function is equal to the Dirac delta equation. Now, if you look at Green's original work, of course, Dirac delta function didn't really come out until the 1900s, but he was born well before that. So this is how we're defining it in a contemporary way. It's very different if you look at his original work. Delta is the poly Dirac's Dirac delta function. Uh, the solution of a particular IVP or initial value problem, that is where the initial values of the problem are given, might be a linear operator times the unknown y equals the right hand side f. Then if we take the Green's function and convolve it, and that's an integration with the right hand side f, and g is the Green's function, we'll get the solution in terms of u. And this is in all kinds of fields like quantum field theory, aerodynamics, seroacoustics, electrodynamics, seismology, statistical theory, or any type of general linear or system of linear PDE ODEs. And in particular, it was invented for electrodynamics, which Claude Maxwell created the Maxwell equations and adapted the theory of George Green. And there was much investigation and wondering how this all came together back then from uh, Maxwell. Uh, the Green's function, which could be defined in X and S, is a transform um, of a liver, linear differential equation L, say over space X, in a subset or Euclidean space Rn, where N is the dimension at any point S, is a solution of the linear operator of that differential function times the Green's function D, G goes as the direct delta function of S minus X. So S is in the space x. It's a particular point. So what we do is we first solve this equation. The right-hand side is delta s minus x, which we got rid of f. And the linear operator is the same, and we solve for g. If we can do that, then uh, using that Green's function, um, we can solve this original differential equation, l of u of x equals f of x. So l might just be an operator like partial, partial x, for example, or any other type of operator, partial to u partial x squared, for example. You can choose anything you want as long as it's linear. If the particular Green's function g is found for the operator l, then any Green's function um, can be found for f of s, right? So in this form, there's no f in the form, so you don't have to worry about um, what f is. You can change that out. And then you'll integrate with respect to s. So what we do is we take the integration of the linear operator times g with f, 
and that will be equal to the direct delta of x minus s times f of s equals f of x. Obviously, this integration power, delta of x minus s is 1 when s equals x, and therefore it's f of x on the right-hand side. Now, remember the operator L, L for linear, is linear and acts only on the variable x and not on the particular variable of integration s by definition. So therefore, we can take the operator outside of the integration, outside of the integration, and you'll see now we have L of the integration of g times f s ds equals the right hand f of x. So look at that equation compared to this one. We've taken this right hand side and replaced it here. The right hand side, uh, left hand side, excuse me, the right hand side is already here, f of x, which came from the integration with the delta function. Now you can see we can directly write the solution as u of x equals the integration of g, the Green's function, x at some point s times f of s over all s. And you see we're integrating s, so we're getting rid of the s variables and we're left with x and only a function of x. This is very intuitive when you think about it. If we just have a domain and we put a little pulse in it, the disturbances might go through the whole domain. The pulse is the direct delta function and the disturbances represent the Green's function in space and time perhaps. And if we take that and integrate all the disturbances through the domain, then we would get the whole solution. Let's look at example Green's functions in the most basic PDEs, partial differential equations. The Poisson equation, uh, which is um, partial 2, partial x2, partial 2, partial y2, plus partial 2, partial z2. So this could be like a view. The corresponding Green's function is negative 1 over 4 pi r. That's like a diffusion type Green's function. The wave equation, remember this is the Allen bar operator, is 1 over c squared partial 2 partial t minus the uh, Laplacian. So, right, so this is a wave equation. And down here, you'll see this is in three dimensions. Mind you, we have different Green's functions for different dimensions. The free space Green's function for the wave equation, which is the most famous one, is the direct delta function times t minus r over c over 4 pi r. So this is like an acoustic wave. If we put a pulse here, it comes out as spheres, and it'll go in every direction. The direct delta function represents the point or the source. 4 pi r represents the decay. So the function decays as r, and say the amplitude p, and I'll go like this, 1 over r, r to the negative 1. The time delay is t minus r over c. r is in meters, c is in meters per second, so meters divided by meters per second is second, and time, time is in second, so second minus second, that checks out in units. And so we would see the pulse at a time equal to the distance of the wave propagation c, which is in meters per second. So it makes physical and dimensional sense when you think about it. We would integrate this with a particular source function to find the pressure field anywhere in three-dimensional space from acoustic waves. Finally, there's the diffusion equation, which is like an unsteady heat equation. We have partial partial t minus the heat conduction coefficient times the Laplacian in 3D. It's a lot like the wave equation. But look how much different the Green's function is. We have something like a heat kernel, 1 over 4 pi kt, where k is heat conduction, t is time to the 3 f's power, times e to the negative r squared over 4 kt. So you'll notice a few things. One is, uh, this is like an elliptic equation, really, so we'll really feel the effect of diffusion everywhere very quickly. There's no direct delta function in it, and it, this like decays as a distance over r squared, uh, Gaussian decay, so that's a Gaussian type form, right? And this term here obviously has 1 over t, so uh, t just decreases the amplitude with time. So this is a nice solution to a linear PDE, and a general solution if we write it in terms of the convolution integral with a right-hand size source term of the general analytical solution of the heat equation. 
So we're going to be using these types of ideas of diffusion, Poisson, and wave equation through the class with uh, the Green's functions.